So let's go. Um, yes, welcome to this. Um, so we actually tricked you. So we, we said maintaining a complex Java extension, but we actually meant um, maintaining Volmux. So how that was done, um, what were the challenges, what's the history there, what's the um, like feature set, like what is it in the first place, so the, you get the, the whole shebang, um, and some outlook, like um, we got some, um, some, uh, some plans there, um, what to do with it. Um, yeah, welcome um, also Björn, um, as I said, one of the Volmux authors happens to be here um, in Italy, accidentally, and I'm very glad to have you um, um, explaining all the gory details. Um, yeah, hi, and um, thank you Thorsten for the invitation, the integration, I feel a bit new um, in the whole LibreOffice community. Um, so yeah, um, I'm going to start with the agenda um, and we are going to start with the history and the architecture of, um, of the Volmux. And so I jump to the next page. And so a few words um, and to the history of Volmux. Um, it's a bit time ago. Um, it was uh, 2004. Um, that Munich um, yeah, in Munich we, they had um, uh, Windows NT, uh, Windows 2000 um, and yeah, they decided um, to migrate and to use um, Linux. Oh, Linux. Um, and yes, this was in 2004 and, and yeah, so, um, yeah, um, every um, departure needs um, some management for forms. Um, and, yeah, I, I come to this point later. Um, so they started um, to develop the Volmux. Um, we have some yeah, some some key major changes. Um, for example, in um, yeah, in 2013, um, or 2012 to 2013, there uh, was the migration from Open Office uh, 3.1. Is that right? Open Office 3.1. Does that work? Oh yes, it does. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I think it was some. I think it was three one ish or something. So, so it was not the very latest um, open office version. So, so, so history, of course, is that um, that um, um, the the Linux project um, started with open office, and then there was a relatively long period of migration, and I think. The first production Volmux was 2008 or something, mm -hmm. and it was also the first time that, that it was the source was published. Um, so, so we're kind of kind of skipping ahead here um, and skipping the op most of the open office details. Mm, okay, so and um, yeah, the next and um, uh, uh, you could say what what's um, Coming after 2030, for example, in 2014, 2016, and there were a lot of um, new features um, that every department, that some department needs. So this is more bug fixing features, and the next. And, and actually, the, um, if you look at the the amount of changes, um, the the migration from. Uh, Open Office to LibreOffice uh, three six in that case was quite massive. So there was some. Uh, so the, the one single um, there were two releases that were really quite large, and that was one of them. Um, for obvious reasons, um, we, we did change quite a bit in, in LibreOffice back in the day. So that it was reflected in, in Volmux. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we are in. So. Oops. 
Yeah, then 2017, Munich um, yeah, announces to return to Microsoft. Um, but yeah, the world looks at its uh, platform independent. Um, so um, we continue to um, support um, and partly um, party integrated new features. Um, but yeah, um, we, to this time, we also um, first communicate with um, Alotropia and ZIP um, to hand over the volumes at some time. Um, so yeah, um, moving from Ant to Maven, um, I have to build the whole build system um, yeah, and Git, Git was added. Um, and yeah, the next um, <coughs> big change um, was the um, we we want to go away from Java Swing um, to the native LibreOffice controls. Um, we um, I'm, I'm, we are coming to this point later. Um, and we uh, um, added the integration of the um, form UI. So when you have a form, you um, have to fill out the form in some way. Um, and this uh, was in an extra separate window um, because of the Java UI, uh, Java Swing UI. And um, we uh, integrated it in the LibreOffice sidebar. Yes, that's that's the that, that story. Right, and, and also the, the last one is um, one of the largest. That's actually from a single release. Um, the, the step from 17 to 18 was was the largest, with um, 96k um, lines um, touched um, repeatedly, sometimes. So. Um, there was quite a large cleanup there and, and li large leap ahead. What's interesting is that um, um, the, the time frames, when you look like when it was <coughs> announced and decided to migrate, and uh, the, what's, let, let's say, how long the project still uh, continues, and also how much. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> that might be better. And, and how much how much work is still um, invested there? Um, <clears throat> right. So um, yeah, the um, I think that is you wanted to cover that. I forgot. So I, let's let's maybe skip skip over that quickly. So um, well, uh, well, basically it's Java, um, and it's um, it's an extension. So so that's those two design decisions that were kind of they're kind of unmodifiable, can't really get out of that without uh, uh, dumping everything. Um, and, and that's kind of decision like mid-2000, uh, mid uh, due to the fact that they wanted something integrated with OpenOffice back in the day, and Java was kind of a nice language cross-platform, so you could, it was already then that when they migrated from Windows to Linux that they needed cross-platform functionality. Um, and, and quite some cool stuff there, and, and Python wasn't quite there yet um, in terms of um, um, ubiquitous availability and also like um, quality of implementation, so Java was a very obvious choice. Um, very quickly, the reason for that, uh, there was also a very nice um, and good thing that that happened already, um, because that's kind of, um, um, yeah, let's say, um, technical debt uh, with quite some uh, fallout, like very brittle, um, due to the fact that Java Swing has a separate um, uh, GUI thread or a separate event handling, and it all ha has to happen in a GUI thread. So you had lots of threads switching there in the implementation, and and subsequently deadlocks and lots of workarounds for that. So. Yeah, just just long story short, that's um, good riddance to that, and it's good that it's gone. And it's also less code, which is always good. Um, so why why this, this thing in the first place? Um, the, that's also kind of 
a bit shrouded in, uh, in, in secrecy, but, but the broadly the decision was to have, there was nothing before. So there was a disjoint a set of proprietary solutions, and of course that had to go with a, the decision to go uh, to migrate to Linux that had to be replaced with something, and there was nothing available for Linux, and there was the, what, what was there before for Windows was also not very nice because it was kind of disjoint. So they, they kind of set, set off and decided to do something nicely integrated. And um, yeah, there should be like all this kind of what you can do with documents and templates that should be all like in one um, suit. Like um, the letter hats, how to handle that, like what, what's the name, what's your extension, when something changes, like I don't know, City gets a new logo, a new design. Um, the form templates and the mail merge should all be in, because it, it's logically very, very close to each other. <clears throat> and it should integrate very deeply with the, um, with the Office suite. Um, and it had to be open source, uh, which is great. Um, and it's licensed um, since 2008 under the European Union public license, EUPL, which is a copyleft, we copyleft license, also very nice and compatible to what um, LibreOffice does. And with that, back to Björn. Thank you. <coughs> and so, and, and we thought it would be nice that um, we can show something in practical, a small demo. Oh. So. Um, So I show uh, an example for the mail merge. And yeah, it's, uh, it's a very simple text. So, so just to, to draw your attention to the fact that the sidebar is um, doing something very custom here. Um, yeah, yes, um, this, the, the sidebar, it's, um, uh, you, you have a, a config um, for every client um, it's um, hosted on a, yeah, it's a Linux hosted server um, where it's received the con uh, his config um, and yeah, this is just um, a basic config um, with a um, letterhead and some other examples. Um, and this icon is for the mail merge and so you can um, uh, support um, an ODS file or a um, um, database, um, could be MySQL, uh, could be uh, Oracle, um, doesn't really matter. Um, and so I have, um, now it's no, not a database, it's simply a file with um, yeah, 1,000 um, data sets, that's random names and some other things. Um, and yes, um, and what you can do now is um, you can simply, as a, it reads the header of the ODS file, first name and so on, um, and you can simply choose it um, in the main merge UI here. So you can yeah, just set it in the document uh, what uh, on the cursor position. Um, and um, you have some yeah, special fields which are um, functions in, Vol in the Volmux. Um, for example, it's the, um, you can do an if, um, if condition. Um, I have set here um, in, the, in the data source here is um, number of children some values um, and here I have um, an if condition that you can set um, and that's widely used um, 
in our departure um, uh, department. Sorry. Um, so when you uh, it reads the data source and when a number of children is null, um, then you get um, 50 euro and when it's one, when you have one child and then it's 100 euro and so on. It's just a simple example, but um, that's one thing that's hev yeah, heavily mostly used. Um, so I, you have a preview function um, and I, I quickly go through um, some, some data sets and you can see here um, it depends what's, um, what the value is in the data source and what we have set in the if condition and yeah, it will be set in the document. Um, so we, we are mostly finished. And, and I select here, can select how many um, data sets you, um, it should um, print or generate. You can select them um, in ODT or PDF and, and I will take just 10 of them. And and you notice that it's, I mean, it's mail merge, so it's essentially the same, like LibreOffice has built in, just with lots and lots and lots of extra bells and whistles, um, kind of geared towards, like, complex needs. So it's kind of the, um, uh, the, the pro version of, um, of that, and it kind of makes sense to have that as an extension rather than have the, the complexity there for everyone. So... Yeah, and same is true for other other features of that. Um, okay, so I have to do a quick look. What's, what's the next page? Um, so, so um, I have another um, document. It's. Um, where uh, the, uh, it's, it's a form, so it's a quick um, demonstration of how um, forms uh, are filled out um, and some functional functionality behind that. Um, for example, you have um, what's uh, also are widely used um, are visibility. So you have some condition that comes from from a field here, um, or from a, from the database, and um, you you will um, you will order it. It turns on visibility on or off, and um, depending on the value. For example, um, you have a combo box here, and I will choose this one. And you can see here that you have now another um, text fragment um, that will be shown depending on what. I'm selecting here, and uh, what I select here, um, it's, and that's uh, a future which which is um, widely used. And one more comment: so, so the, um, the the metadata that, that controls all of that behavior that's um, included in the in the um, templates and the ODF files, um, and it's um, implemented um, as um, RDF. So it's, it kind of survives, load and save. It's always like connected to the document. Kind of nice demo of um, of the power of the extensibility, really of uh, both LibreOffice and and ODF now. And for example, this is uh, the RDF file, um, and you can see what what is, is generated. And um, of course, you don't write such things, and um, by all by hand, um, you have um, it's, it's a part of the wallbox. 
and it's part of the one mux is the four mux um, and this is the uh, yeah the, the tool where you um create um create a form and um, can um, can adapt functions can set you can set functions it even comes with documentation <laughs> even with a homepage olmux.org um, so <clears throat> Should show how you can um, mix um, documents to one final document, um, so you can um, um, insert fragments in the main document. And so, when you have, um, for example, um, there's a, a new legal um, new paragraph for something, and you don't need to change the whole document. You can um, change the the fragment a fragment, and that will be loaded in the main document, and um, so it's easier to maintain. It's a bit like if you are a, um, um, a programmer, it's a bit like includes. So so you just um, have one copy of this of this footer, and if your if your board changes, you don't need to change hundred templates. You just change the the one include, and then get it for free. Or the logo of the of your of your company or of your city. Um, yes, and what's um, it um, has an integration for LDAP, um, so in the latter head, um, if if some um, employee at at the Munich um, department uh, needs to send a letter to. Some someone, and it and will be automatically filled um, by um, by the values which which are in the LDAP database, and so it will be filled out in the letterhead. Um, yes, and and to the last point, create a um, result template from workflow. So um, yeah, you can con you can control it if um, some value in the database is true, and you can insert or it will be inserted another fragment um, to the main document. Yes. So, given that we're running slowly out of time, um, <clears throat> so so all of that. So, first of all, um, personally, I'm, I'm, a, I'm as you might have heard, I'm a great fan because that's that's kind of super powerful. You find that, that there's professional packages that, that that offer you that, but but they are kind of really expensive and and they are used by banks and other um, <clears throat> institutions that do a lot of um, produce a lot of documents like like a government. Um, but none of that is open source. There are a few open source solutions, but none of that um, I, that I would know is as nicely integrated with LibreOffice as something that is usually in front of the user's eye. <clears throat> so, so the idea was that um, with us um, slowly coming to an end, this project, um, that it would be a good idea at least to ask um, uh, the Document Foundation um, if, if they would take over the project, there are still users out there, so, so mostly smaller municipalities um, that we know of. But as always with open source, you usually don't know who's using uh, your software unless something breaks. 
um, or unless um, um, maintenance stops and then people will kind of show up and say, uh -huh, but uh, can you fix the bug or we need this? So, um, yeah, that, that was the, um, the idea that it would be kind of a nice, nice match where um, actually TDF is already hosting the, uh, the website and I believe the wiki since 2012 or something. So, so there's already kind of strong ties. Um, the, the pitch would be like it's extremely nice showcase for what is possible uh, with ODF um, and, and as an extension kind of, I mean, you have, you have extensions that use one feature, but that's an extension that kind of uses all the features, including the sidebar. Um, it's been in continuous development, has been quite some cleanup recently, so, so that is kind of reasonably future-proofish code. Um, nice success story beyond the fact that sadly Munich is uh, migrating away, but um, I mean it's in production since uh, 2008, so, so that it should count for something. In a, um, no, this is the third largest uh, city um, in Germany. Um, and um, yeah, okay, okay. that's probably a blow. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and it's kind of like um, so it's kind of one stop shop in terms of this like what, what you need for everything that, that produces documents, so you can, you can do it all um, there in one place. And, and there is some commitment uh, from um, the city of Munich and also from, from my company um, because. Yeah, I think it's a great piece of software, and, and I do believe that there is that it has a future, and that there might even be business there that um, once it, um, um, it's a TDF and perhaps a bit um, cleaned up and um, this bit less German, and um, yeah, that, that there's other people um, being getting interested, and in that or that those people that are still using it um, say, yeah, well, we we might need some. We might need some support or maintenance there. So there's some commitment for cleanup and improvement, uh, and also a limited commitment to maintain that um, for at least a year or two, so, so that it's not like um, code dump and run away. Um, yeah. And with that, we're one minute over. So if you've got any questions, maybe that's something for the hallway. Thank you very much. Thank you.